We've arrived at the final unit for Algebra 2, Statistics and Probability. This makes up 14-21% to 21 of your exam, so you usually will see one or two multiple choice and two or three short answer problems. We're first going to talk about the types of studies. We have sample surveys, observational studies, and controlled experiments in this course. Sample surveys are like online polls. Experimenters take a randomly selected sample of answers from a larger survey and analyze them, and they cannot draw inferences, but they can draw generalizations from their results. In observational studies, we have a lot less work on the part of the experimenter, and they're often a lot more cost-effective. They simply look at something that's already happening and analyze the results of whatever that treatment might be. As such, this is a non-random treatment and selection. From this, one could find causation, but not a greater generalization because the results of this treatment only represent what is true in an observed population, not for the greater world population. Lastly, there's controlled experiments, which involve active experimenters who randomly assign different groups of people to treatment groups. Participants may or may not be randomly selected to participate. For example, brain MRI studies often involve some form of payment to the surveyed peoples because of a risk of radiation poisoning. From these studies, a generalization can be made if the participants were randomly selected, otherwise only an inference can be concluded because of potential bias. Studies can also be used single-blind or double-blind. In a single-blind experiment, the participants don't know which side of the experiment they're on. For example, in a vaccine study, participants might not know if they got, for example, a placebo or a real thing. This eliminates some bias and mistaken results. Double-blind experiments have this too, but the experimenters themselves don't know which group is which until after they've analyzed the data. Using the previous example, they would analyze the data without knowing which group got the placebo and which group got the vaccine until after they had collected and fully analyzed the data. This would eliminate the most bias. Now, good experiments always involve three things. The random assignment of treatment, such as in a single or double-blind experiment, have a lot of participants and include a control group. Let's dive into a little more complicated statistics. Firstly, you should know terms such as standard deviation, mean, mode, and median from Algebra 1. In this case, we're going to define mean and standard deviation using different variables depending on whether we look at a whole population or just a sample. We're going to use an X with a line over it for a sample mean and mu, a Greek letter, for the population mean. Standard deviation is an S for sample and a lowercase sigma for population. We'll apply these definitions throughout the next couple of minutes. The first thing we're going to need to learn is what a normal distribution curve looks like. A normal distribution is symmetrical, and 68% of the data, as we see here, is within one standard deviation plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. 95% is within two, and 99.7 is within three. If you're given a specific individual and need to find the percentile that it represents within this distribution, you'll want to use the norm CDF function on your calculator. Because every calculator is a little bit different, be sure to look up how to use the norm CDF function on your own personal calculator. One last thing to know about this diagram is that it is a perfectly distributed curve with the mean, mode, and median representing the same value, the midline of the curve. We have a few more equations to go over before we move on to probability. First thing is con confidence intervals. A confidence interval is a measure of how good your data is, and it can be used, can be calculated using this equation. CI is equal to the mean plus or minus Z times lowercase sigma over the square root of N, where N is your sample population, and Z changes based on what your confidence level is. If you want to find a confidence level of 90, you'd use 1.645, 95%, 1.96, and 99%, 2.575. These three values must be memorized for your Regents exam, and there is no way around it. Now let's say you want to calculate the margin of error. A margin of error is greater when there's less people. This makes sense. Just think about it. If you have a survey with a lot more people, it's going to be more accurate than a survey with less people. The margin of error can be calculated by multiplying z times p times the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. This z is the exact same z that we used right here and we would use these exact same values. A different z is found in z-scores, which are just used to find how many standard deviations a value is from the mean. We're going to take those differing values from earlier and create two equations that essentially mean the same thing. This first one is for samples, and this first one's for population, but again, these variables essentially have the same meaning, just for different sample versus a different population. All right, z is equal to the selected value minus the mean over the standard deviation value, same thing here. And again, you can find standard deviation values using your calculator from Algebra 1. This just about finishes statistics. If this seems a little bit abstract, don't worry, because on your Algebra 2 exam, statistics should be pretty clear, and they shouldn't involve too much guessing. They should be pretty 
concise as well, and you shouldn't need to show too much work. Now into probability, which at this stage is just common sense and again memorization. The first set expression here is set as the probability of A or B, and this is just the notation we use. The U right here means union. It's the same deal here. This means the probability of A and B occurring, and given that A and B are different events, probability should always be written and calculated using fractions as well. This, by the way, this upside down U means intersection. Let's finish this up. We've got the probability of a complement, which is the probability that an event, say, let's call it event E, does not happen. This is written as P of event, or E prime, is equal to 1 minus P of E. So basically, 100% probability minus the probability the event does happen is, of course, the probability that it doesn't happen. And this just really makes sense. Again, going back to the idea that probability in Algebra 2 is really just about using common sense. Now, mutually exclusive events have nothing in common and don't affect each other. This means that the probability of A and B separately is essentially the same as the probability of as if both of them or either of them happen. And independent events means that the outcome of the first event, let's call it event A, does not affect the outcome of event B. Right? There are three ways that we can prove this, as we see here. Using conditional probability is probably easiest, and we'll learn that in a second, but that's just basically where we have this P of A, a little line, B, and then in parentheses. Now a dependent event is obviously just the opposite of an independent event, and it means that the outcome of the first event will affect the second event. This is how we calculate that. Again, let's look at conditional probability. This is written like this. It is the probability of A happening given that B has already happened and we know the outcome of B, and we can write it like this. At the end of the day, these are really just formulas that you can memorize, or you can just think about it on the exam. I mean, using common sense, you can usually derive them yourself, and just think about, again, this example of complements. The probability of 1 is just 100%, right? So subtracting the probability that something will happen will just give the probability that it doesn't. We here at PrepWorks wish you good luck and a high score on the Regents exam.